today we're gonna make an all natural fly spray. It's gonna be all purpose, but it cannot be used for cats. It can be used for horses, cattle, dogs, goats, pigs, anything livestock, just not cats. It's gonna be super simple and very, very inexpensive. So let's get into it. Okay, so the recipe is gonna call for um, a 32 fluid ounce sprayer. Is This is what we're using today. So um, I'm going to use citronella oil and juniper berry oil and peppermint oil and a little tiny bit of pyrethrins. This is all natural. This is a really toxic um, natural remedy for flies, but it's it, it will kill our pollinators too. So you just wanna make sure you spray down your livestock and your, you know, your dogs, and um, you don't want to, you know, spray it on your garden and things like that. Um, but you can do that for your garden, just you'd wanna be very select. But anyways, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add, I use distilled water. You can use tap water if you're a little more frugal and that's what you wanna do, but distilled water is always great to use for, seems to last longer. No, I might have actually filled too much. Okay, we need a little room. Okay, now this does come with instructions, the, the natural pyrethrins. It's a concentrate. This is four fluid ounces. It's a botanical insecticide. It kills ants, bed bugs, deer flies, flies, um, fleas, fruit flies, face flies, gnats, house fly, flies, mites, mosquitoes, roaches, and stable flies. So it's great for use in barns, dairies, milking parlors, and poultry houses. Use on cattle, hogs, horse, and poultry, and sheep. And this can also be used on dogs. So, it comes with a, um, oh, this, I got some on me, hang on. Okay, it comes with a, um, an insert that tells you, you know, how to measure it out for each certain different scenario that you're using it for. So, you'll, you want to read through that. Now, I have already read through it and I've used it a lot and I kind of know what I use it, how I use it. And so for 32 fluid ounces for a fly spray, I'm putting about one tablespoon. It's gonna be about right. And the reason why I know that cap is a tablespoon is because I have measured it a bunch of times so I know that. Sure, I rinse it off my hands. You don't want to get the concentrate straight on you. Um, it's probably better to use gloves. It doesn't really have, it has a, a faint smell of like, if you've ever used a, a, a bomb, you know, like a flea bomb that you set off in your house, it kind of has that smell. And that's used, used to be what our flea bombs were. Now for citronella, the same thing. We're going to use about a tablespoon. And then for our oils, we're just kind of going to go by drops and we are going to want 20 drops or about one teaspoon. So I'm just going to kind of, that is up the juniper. And then for the peppermint oil, we are just going to do probably eight, nine, ten, ten drops. So we don't want it to, peppermint oil can be very um, irritating to the skin if it's, you know, too strong. Now, to make this a little more sticky for the animals, you could add a little tiny bit of like oil to it or dish soap or something, but we have such intense heat and sun here that I really don't like that to be on my horse's coat. Uh, the oil it like intensifies it. And there's already oils in here that kind of emulsify it. So to me, this is good enough for a fly spray. Um, 
especially for something that's going to be like a horse that's going to be standing out in the sun for hours or a cow or, you know, so, but this is really great for all purpose. I use this everywhere. I use it around my baseboards, um, for the scorpions, but it does kill spiders, which I don't like killing spiders. The only spider I ever kill is a black widow. And that's only if they're in my area. So if they're, they're somewhere that doesn't, you know, I don't kill them if they're out and about in their own territory and they can't hurt anyone. But like we have, I have a little uh, black Chinese spider. They're the jumping spider. And you know, we have a lot of good beneficial spiders. So I'm very careful. I spray this in the evening when the scorpions come out because we have scorpions really bad. And just spray the edges of my, of my barn and you know, where they can get in and um, in places, uh, wood places and things like that. But let's go out to the pasture and we're gonna spray the horse down really quick and I'll show you. This is so awesome for horses, it's unreal. Really does a good job. And he, we've had so much rain that mosquitoes are a problem and horses can get West Nile. So this really protects them because the juniper and the peppermint and the citronella really, really will help keep um, uh, the mosquitoes away. I used to use eucalyptus and lemon, which is really effective as well, but lemon is very photo sensitizing with the sun and it bleaches my horses. She's a, a dark liver chestnut and it bleaches her coat out. So I know that can't be good. So I started using the citronella, the peppermint oil and the juniper. And because we have juniper trees and my horses and my cattle all weave through the juniper trying to get juniper on them because they know that repels you know, these, it, these flying insects and stuff. So we already have the oil. That's awesome. And these oils I get on piping rock and, um, you can get, they're, they're excellent oils, but any, I love now brand. Now brand oils are amazing. I'll link all this stuff down in the description box below. Uh, all of it you can get on Amazon. You can look at my Amazon store. I'm going to have a, a link for my fly spray and you know how I make it and everything with the recipe in there. So if you didn't get it, you can get it there. And yeah, let's go out to the pasture and get these horses sprayed down and my donkey. All right, guys, we're headed out to the pasture. And before we go out there, I just wanted to let you know, I did read the that you know that that little packet that it comes with a, a it's a big long list and I did read for flies and to spray it on your livestock and stuff like that I went in between for livestock it was heavier but for the dogs it's lighter and it is I think for the dogs it, it was uh, one part concentrate to 39 parts water or oil but um, I don't have a 39 quart thing and it, so I just do 32 and I just do the the one tablespoon which is way less than it should be and it works amazing at that ratio so if you have a really heavy infestation you I mean you might want to go by what this says but um, I found you don't have to go as strong so that's a good thing. And like for the livestock, you can soak them down with like, um, I think it was uh, one part concentrate, nine parts water. So, I mean, that's really strong. And I've never had to have that. Like we, if I don't use this stuff and, and it has a residual, it stays for days. But if I don't use this stuff and I come out, my cow and my horse and donkey, my horses are just covered with flies. So this stuff really works at this ratio for me and I feel better about it being a little bit lighter. So anyways, um, oh, and another thing is it's best to write on there fly spray and I put no cats in case somebody else comes in and sees it, grabs it, or I take this to barbecues all the time and outings and stuff, you know, and um, it, it's really, really great stuff, especially when it's the heat of the summer and the mosquitoes are at their worst and the flies are at their worst. Sometimes just plain essential oils aren't quite enough. But anyways, let's head out and grab Angel and we'll spray her down and I'll show you how good it works. Okay, so 
this is my horse angel and she's out on a pretty good size 20 acres anyway and it's you know a lot of vegetation but anyways um these biting flies as you can see i haven't done her in several days and they are now biting her and so i'm going to soak this down and show you how well this works let's see here and any of the flies that it comes in contact with it'll kill them Yep, he fell. And they'll die. Yep, they all fell off. Now, this will really, uh, really saturate that area. And I've been doing it all summer, but here, last few days, oh, with all this rain, she has an old scar. But they're not getting her back feet, back legs that much. They're just getting these fronts. was born in um, 2001 so she's 22 and I've had her pretty much her entire life and um, I think I got her when she was about 14 months old she ran a pipe through her hip and the people that owned her were going to have her euthanized and I stepped up and asked if I could have her and rehabilitate her myself and so they gave her to me and I did rehabilitate her and um, under all the odds, they said she'd never be ridden. She has done all kinds of things with my students. She's been my top lesson horse throughout the years. She's done team roping and, you know, dressage, jumping, English, everything you can think of. Every little kid has ever ridden. She's done so much. She's been rodeo queen uh, for several different girls. and. She's just a wonderful horse, just a really, really good horse. And I'm just very lucky to have had her all these years. So I try really hard to do everything as natural as I can for her. In the beginning, I was really into doing the vaccines and the chemical dewormers, and she was very sickly a lot. She's had a lot of uh, laminitis and, and mold issues and um, colic, she used to colic all the time. And now that I'm going as, natural as I can she's getting healthier and healthier so I'm a firm believer in that now Cletus I've had him for many many years probably as long I've known him as long as Angel I've probably had him probably 15 or 20 years but he uh, he is probably 35 maybe he was older when I got him and he's had several strokes but he's, you know, very healthy. So he's more than welcome to live out his life till his final days, you know, here on the place. He's been a really, really good donkey. He used to break uh, show cattle to lead. So he it might have something to do with why he had uh, strokes. He's just, I don't know. I don't know why he did, but he's had those strokes 15 years ago or so. But with him too, I've become very, uh, adamant about doing everything as natural as I can with him and he's really gotten healthy. Okay so here is my hen house and we have had stick type fleas in here but I've been really diligent about spraying this mixture in in their uh, you know the entire house and I lightly missed them a little bit, but it has really stopped these fleas in their tracks. I'm so excited this year to have finally found something that is really going to stop these uh, stick type fleas. So if you've ever had issues with those, this is a great thing to use. I just do the dirt. Um, I do spritz their feathers a little bit and around all the, you know, corners and stuff and and then I rake it out, you know, scrape all the dirt out 
once a week and then spray it really good. I'm doing it about once a week. Okay guys, I'm gonna wrap it up. That's my video on making a natural fly spray, an uh, all-purpose one for your livestock, your dogs, um, anything, you can use it around your barn. And anywhere that you have flies, you can use it. It is the best stuff ever. Just don't use it around cats, or don't spray them directly anyway. Um, I do spray my barn and my cats are in my barn, but um, once it dries, it's, it's pretty safe for them to be around. You just don't wanna spray it and have them be licking it or anything like that. But anyways, I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Share it to anyone who might need it this year with all these flies, ugh, and, I'll talk to you later. Bye.